The ending of Ahsoka Explained. So, primarily we're talking about Balin, because there's a lot to unravel here. So we see Balin's skull walking out on this massive stone sculpture. Kind of looks like Mount Rushmore, but, you know, Star Wars. Lord of the Rings style. And he's walking out, and there's this big figure called the Father, pointing. And he's walking on the finger, and he's looking towards a mountain in the far distance with the peak glistening. Okay, so what is the mountain? What's at the peak? What's glistening? And who is this guy? Who is this statue? Who is next to him? And who's also on his other side? So this is the father of Mortis. These are called the Ones. They're gods. They're very sentient beings. Essentially, they are kind of overseeing the galaxy, and they're sort of manifestations of the Force, but kind of they dictate the Force almost in a way. So the father is the balance of the Force. The guy next to him with the line right through his eye, which is interesting since it's like Anakin's scar, is the son. He is the embodiment of the dark side. We saw them in the Clone Wars. Next to the father on the other side is the daughter but with no head, with no face. You can just see her body, her outline. So why does she have no head? It's because Ahsoka has taken that mantle. It no longer looks like whoever the daughter was, which has now gone on and given her powers to Ahsoka during the Clone Wars. If you missed the whole Ahsoka Clone Wars Mortis arc, then you better check out uh, Season 3. I've done a lot of videos on the channel as well. In fact, I just uploaded one right now, which has a compilation of about 50 minutes of who the father is, the son, the daughter, and Abeloth, the mother. So he's pointing towards the mountain. The mountain is glistening. Now, in the Clone Wars, in Season 3, Anakin sees the exact same mountain glistening in the same way, and he's running to it. He finally gets to it, and inside is the father. So why would the father be pointing towards this place? Well, I think what's happening is he's either showing the direction of where to go to speak to the ones, to the Mortis gods, or this is the place where the mother has been banished. The mother used to be a mortal. She wasn't a god like these guys. She was a mortal being. She was the caretaker for the ones. And as time passed, she started to age. And she loved her family. She loved taking care of them. Eventually, she became you know, known as the mother because she was kind of overseeing everyone and kind of you know, creating the peace there. So what happened was she wanted to be immortal so that she could stay with her family and she ended up drinking from the pool of knowledge. And this had some very adverse effects. It turned her into this basically monster and made her immortal, but she was so unbelievably powerful and so chaotic that she ended up having to be banished to this place. And the son, the father, and the daughter, after many thousands of years, would have to go there to make sure that she was contained and trap her in this jail, so to speak, because she kept escaping. But once the ones died, the daughter died, the son, and the father died, thanks to Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan and, and Ahsoka, we don't really know what happened to her. We don't know if she's actually escaped, because there's no one to contain her anymore, right? They were coming back every few thousand years even, to come and just contain her in her spot that they had put her in, and jail her, lock her up. She is that dangerous, she is that powerful. Luke Skywalker ended up fighting her uh, in Legends. I have a whole video about it if you want to check it out. But essentially, I think whoever is calling to Balin is either the son, who I know said was dead, but we did see him appear to move on the mural in Rebels, which the father, the son, and the daughter were on the mural, which was the entranceway to the world between worlds, or Ezra. And he ended up kind of like his, he, it just seemed like he was alive. Like something, like he, I don't think he was dead. It just seems weird. Also the fact that Morai, the owl, is always around Ahsoka. And she is what keeps hovering around Ahsoka all the time. After Ahsoka was killed by the son and then brought back to life by the daughter. Once the daughter gave her life to save Ahsoka, we just see this owl always around her called Morai. We all believe this owl is the daughter itself. Which now, truth be told, is probably Ahsoka. So my thoughts here are that Ahsoka is the daughter, Anakin is now the father, in which, of course, that's actually what the father wanted from Anakin. He wanted him to take his place because he felt Anakin was the pure balance. And I think Anakin now has actualized this dream and this prophecy is that he did bring balance. It's just he did it, you know, after causing chaos as Vader. And uh, eventually now in the afterlife, he's bringing balance. But, you know, I guess it wasn't how the Jedi thought it would go, but it kind of ended up how they wanted. So there's that. And then the sun is open for debate. It could be Balin, or who could be reaching out to him is Abeloth. 
My thoughts personally are that it is the son. I think the son is still very prevalent. I think he's around. I don't think Dave Filoni would introduce the mother. I think she's far too fictitious, even for Star Wars. I think she's way too legends. And to introduce a new character like that, that is really intricate, I think would be something that possibly would be a risk for, you know, their team or the Disney team or whoever's overseeing this or, or watching or whatever. But I think if he's going to create anything to do with the ones, which he, he has clearly, then he's going to expand upon the sun. And I feel like the sun was focused on much more in the Clone Wars and in Rebels a little bit with the mural. So I think Balin is potentially going to be the sun, the embodiment of darkness, of the dark side. And to this, I wonder, is he, is he going there because he wants to kill it? Or is he going there because he wants the pool of knowledge, which grants him literally access to seeing things into the future that everyone would wish to see, you know, scenarios, the future itself? Or is he going there to actually become the one, become the sun? Balin Skull, the name Skull, I've said this many times, so I'll just reiterate for anyone who's new here. Balin Skull, Skull is the Norse wolf, which is a son of Fenrir. And this Norse wolf of Skoll is always chasing the sun. And its brother, Hati, Jin Hati, is chasing the moon, right? So that they're always kind of chasing each other in a way. And Balin chasing the sun, haha, funny play on words, the son of Mortis. So it kind of just makes you think that, yes, I believe that the father is pointing towards the peak, which is the same one that Anakin went to and discovered the father there. I think here we will see perhaps the sun reemerge. We'll see what happens. I don't know how he's still alive. You know, he got killed by the special Mortis dagger and that should have killed him just like it killed the father, but I guess not. No one's ever really gone. Let me know what you guys think about this. I think it's unbelievably wild the fact that Dave Filoni would incorporate the ones. I always was so fascinated about these guys and I wanted to learn so much more about them. But that was it. It was just like a blip in the Clone Wars and we never learned about them again. So um, I hope we get to learn about them going forwards in season two and in the movie. And, uh, you know, uh, with Balin's character, rest in peace, Ray Stevenson, I, I really wish that we could have seen another fantastic performance from him and for him to live his life. I wonder what is going to happen now. Like, What are they going to do now? Are they going to cast perhaps Sam Witwer to play the son? And maybe he takes the role, personification, the physicalities? I don't really know. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I'm excited to say the least. And hopefully I'll get an answer to my question about Red Lightning. I think I've asked Ashley Eckstein and I've asked James Arnold Taylor but they didn't know the answer so maybe one day you know this will get to Dave Filoni and he'll maybe he'll have an answer maybe red lightning is more powerful than uh, Sith purple blue but we know that's more powerful than orange yellow lightning which is force judgment that Plo Koon used but uh you know we don't know much about red lightning so I, I wonder anyways that's the ending of Ahsoka Explained hope it wasn't too confusing. I really do recommend you check out my The Gods of Mortis video. It's 49 to 50 minutes long. I just uploaded it. So go check that one out. It's really a nice watch. A lot of the information is from the internet. A lot of the information is from books that I have myself and my own brain from what I remember from the Clone Wars and the stuff I've read, which I didn't cite. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did on the way out for more like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.